Alright guys, Touch Quibit back again today, hopefully enjoying your Thursday so far, and today I think it's about time we talk about the Optic Gaming Los Angeles, where could they possibly go from here? Last weekend there, their worst weekend pretty much of the entire season I suppose, at the Paris Home Series, what could they possibly do going forwards to improve this squad, and not only for the rest of this season, yes, there's a few more events left to be played, who knows, these guys could turn up at champs, but going forwards to next season, what is their plan, right, given especially that at the start of the season we were talking about, look, the names on this squad, especially what they've done in previous seasons, what they did in the Black Ops 4 season, largely on the 100 Thieves team, that they were going to be a very deadly squad. They are very rarely mixed it up for a championship. We're going to talk about that in coming minutes. So, like if you guys enjoy the video, subscribe if you're new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. And look at this. DeSerto power ranking so far this season after every single event. Um, thought this is pretty interesting. Maybe we can discuss this more in coming days. But we look at the OGLA team. Started off at around ninth place, went down to the worst team in the league, had a bit of a bounce back at a certain point, and then since they added Chino, they've done a little bit better in the online scene, but nothing nothing spectacular and um, you know honestly I would put them further down than they are right now after this most recent event given that Toronto just absolutely battered them as we will look at right here in a second but maybe decide to a lag in their power rankings somewhat so yeah Let's have a look at exactly how this has gone. Thought this was kind of interesting as well from Easy Mac looking at changes from LAN to online. Might look at this in more depth at the end of the video as well. But we look at OGLA here. They were two in five in terms of, I, I suppose, series count on LAN. And then moving to online, they've gone five and eight, right? So technically an improvement. Then again, you could say like regression to the mean, right? Given they were so bad on LAN that um, coming to online, they can't particularly be much worse. And they have won some decent series since bringing Chino into the squad. But most recently, this past weekend, of course, they got rid of Pac Man a while ago as their coach. They seem to have this OGLA trial guy going on behind the scenes as well, which we never really had any confirmation of. But, you know, we look at their most recent results and it's not very favourable, right? And with the last few events coming into the season... There obviously is questions to be asked about whether you can still make changes. I believe the um, there's a roster lock coming up relatively soon. You can't make changes all the way up until the doorstep of champs. So I think there's a couple of more weeks before these teams can you know have to solidify their rosters. Even and none of that I'm pretty sure is public, but that's what I've been hearing. So let's talk about Toronto Ultra versus OGLA this last series from the past weekend. 3-0 to the Ultra. And this really, um, you know, for a lot of teams, this could have been the nail in the coffin, right? And maybe it will be to this squad, but we haven't heard anything about some other rumors of any other players coming into this team. But we had that 250 to 49 victory in the very first map. The, the Search and Destroy and the Domination were, well, the Dom was kind of close, but the Search and Destroy was pretty comfortable once again. And that's against a Toronto Ultra team, which is far from the best team in the league, right? A squad that, yes, they, they were pretty competitive against Atlanta FaZe, also against um, you know, New York Subliners when they played them next. So definitely a decent squad but not a squad that we're expecting to win championships anytime soon. And when you're looking at these score lines, this is something you expect OGLA to maybe lose to on very rare occasions to one of the best teams in the game. But, you know, Toronto are definitely not one of the best teams in the game, or at least haven't proved it so far as yet. So this was a very surprising result to a lot of people. Yes, we are online. And of course, that is a big consideration, right? A lot of players, I'm sure, chalking up the rest of the season. But at the end of the day, there's a lot of money on the line. Who knows as yet whether Champs is going to be on LAN. We hope and imagine it will be, but who knows what's going to happen right and of course seeding is a very big deal if you're in the top in the, in the bottom four at least of the um the pro league standings ninth through 12th you will start in the losers bracket at champs and will have to win i believe eight series in a row to make it and win the grand finals and win the world championship so look even if you're a squad like ogla with slasher and the likes of the players they have on this team you're not going to win eight series in a row against uh, some of the great talents we have right now and some of the great squads we have in call of duty just not going to happen i'm afraid so you know you have to finish in the top eight of the pro league to have a good shot at champs yes it's online but it's very important even if um you know we're going to a champs on land where things could be different for some of these players so this is what was surprising. These are Lineman's card from the previous weekends. Some of these statistics here, you just wouldn't expect to have players like this. So TJ, 0. 0.6 and R, 0. 0.14 in search. Domination was okay. Chino with a 0. 0.87. Nor 0.2 in search and destroy. I guess they only played two of them, but, you know, not ideal, right? And even Slasher can barely go positive in the hard points. Dashy with a 0. 0.5 in hard point and search and destroy. Not something I would have expected to see last year. And yes, if it was on land, maybe this wouldn't have happened. You know, there's things that we can talk about all day long but it is what it is at the end of the day they finished eighth at this most recent event pretty much a you know a woeful weekend for Optic Gaming Los Angeles you know they didn't exactly have the easiest weekend they played New York Subliners first who of course were a competitive squad nearly could have made it to the grand finals once again beating Atlanta Face potentially in a game five but they fell short once again as we talked about this past weekend 
this is what it's looked like so far this season. So the launch weekend, they go 0-2. Poor weekend there. Then Atlanta, they go 0-2 again. They do make a few semi-finals here. And at Florida, they did actually make the grand finals. They beat Toronto in that one in a game 5 round 11 to face up against FaZe in the grand finals. That was when they first added Chino. And it really looked like it was going to kind of rejuvenate the squad. Seattle, they also make top 4. But this past weekend, when you expect them to have a pretty good run, and you know a lot of people were predicting them to possibly get out of this group, they didn't have an easy one, right, with, with who they were playing against. But you know a lot of people were saying maybe OGLA can get past New York. A fair few people were predicting them to get to the semi-finals again and maybe even make it further. And Maven was even talking about it on the podcast he was picking them as his dark horse to win the entire thing. So they seem to have fallen off quite significantly, and it's not ideal to see, right, for a team that has players of such caliber. This is what it's looked like so far this season. So yes, the Florida event when they made the grand finals they had a couple of decent wins against uh, Paris and Rocker at this one they seem to be relatively good typically when they go down to the losers and all this stuff's online right so it's not necessarily the online factor that is plaguing up to gaming right now because you look at ultra you look at subliners these losses are pretty unacceptable for a team with the caliber of players that they have and let's look at some of the pro player reactions to this. So Slasher says, Toronto's the better team. We got absolutely smoked. We were not lagging. That's a complaint that OGLA have had certainly earlier in the season when these um, well, the online leagues started to kick off. But yeah, Toronto's straight up the better team. Was obviously complaining about some of the issues with the game right now. And, you know, all pros are talking about this, that they're not exactly liking the game and all this kind of stuff. Then again, a lot of the pros on the better teams tend not to be saying this stuff because they're, they're loving life, right? Like if they're winning championships. So of course, it is certainly a, an, an issue that a lot of players have have to deal with this season but if you're not in the mindset that you can like overcome this stuff because at the end of the day we can talk about inconsistency all we like but you know the last two events Florida Atlanta both teams in the grand finals Florida win the last two events back to back there's obviously a reason why that is the case it's not like a complete toss of every single event who's going to win because we wouldn't see some of these pretty consistent results over the last few events that we have seen Dallas making two grand final or two semi-finals in a row as well so look, OGLA clearly need to change something, I imagine. But as he talked about, I can't even practice this, this BS as we wanted to. We've kind of talked about practice kind of recently with the different spawns going on on the servers. And this is what Benson says on the matter. Something has to change with OG. I have no idea what the solution is. They show massive improvements. Then they show us that. Wildly inconsistent. I hope they figure something out because the players on that team have such talent and are genuinely good people. Pac-Man, former coach, change is indeed the key. Pac-Man, oh, and Sasha, I wish I could speak my mind on the issue. Kenny replies to it. Our practice is what needs to change. Actual joke. We've had the same problem since day one and we can't improve at all because of it. So clearly some practice issues within the squad. We've seen Pac-Man talk about this on the podcast quite a while ago. People implying that Dashi is the, the issue on that team in terms of um, the vibe mindset and getting on and practicing and all this kind of stuff. So maybe that's still the case. But then again, can you really drop a player like Dashi? Supposedly they did a while ago, right? When he was supposed to move to the bench and Chino was in the squad. But then Dashi came back to the starting lineup and we had all that drama behind the scenes. We never really got to figure out exactly what was going on there. But potentially that's plaguing the team as well. And if Dashi's not dropping incredible numbers, then, you know, questions have to be asked about where exactly the issue is going wrong in this team, given they have so many very very talented players indeed that have won many many championships in previous years especially if you look at you know most recent couple of years Chino winning a couple of championships in World War II if this team was playing World War II they would be filthy right you would imagine but uh, clearly, it's not going on on the chemistry stuff behind the scenes. And 5v5 probably exacerbates that issue. Could write a whole book about this year, says Kenny. Let's co-write one about this year. It'd sell millions. And, um, you know, Dashi, I can't wait for another track. Cod, a lot of players are talking about this right now. I imagine if they were winning events, maybe he wouldn't exactly be saying this. But who knows, right? And look, at the end of the day, if a team's not doing great, this is the kind of stuff that's going to come out. It's not ideal from any perspective at all. So the question really is, what is the potential solution for this team? Because TJ says, yo, I'm using auto tax print, a tweet that's since been deleted, kind of implying that like he doesn't really care about the GAs anymore, like he's going to do whatever he can to, to get a win. I don't imagine he's been fully serious on this one. Then you've got this from Cam Allen, right? So if we're going to talk about exactly what change you're going to make, if you are going to make one, you know, this is what the stats look like. And at the end of the day, stats don't mean everything, but they don't lie, right? So Dash with a 1.01, Slasher probably the standout performance on the team so far this season. But then again, given his role, it's not exactly like a 1.13 is spectacular with that, what other ARs are putting up. 
up on the main stage. Jacob, of course, has um, you know, removed, moved on from the team, but Chino dropping exactly the same numbers that Jacob was. And even though people, when Chino initially joined the squad, were talking about how you know he was the enabler, the other players on the team were playing better with Jacob gone. Seems like that honeymoon period is over, and they're dropping exactly the same numbers. And um, at the end of the day, the team is now getting equally bad results, right? Finishing top eight at the last event. So was Jacob really the problem? You could uh, you could certainly argue no. TJ with a 0.9, but he has been significantly better in recent events. And when TJ is performing well, that's when this squad can potentially take things to a next level. So what's been talked about a while ago was this potential gunless move. And Lando talked about it now on the 22nd of May that it was a very real possibility indeed. It was certainly rumoured at the time. But as Maven talks about in reply to this, doubt it. Just don't see a world in which they could possibly afford him on the existing lineup due to their salary cap cap, so kind of confusing, was likely the most affordable contract, but I don't see in a world in which it happens personally. I 100% agree the dollars will decide whether or not it happens, but there may be something OGLA can do contract-wise, which I'm not aware of. I saw the rumours. Um, they can't spend any more money on this lineup type of thing. They have Kenny, Dashi, Slasher, TJ. They don't need another big contract guy. So definitely a valid opinion. Then again, what's OGLA thinking about this, right? Because if you look at a guy like Gunless, and I'm not trying to like make this move happen or something, I don't even particularly think it's very likely given that, um, well, if it hasn't happened already, I can't imagine it will happen now. But at the same time, you look at this team and yes, maybe Slasher and Gunless haven't got on in the past, but now is probably the right time if you are going to make a move for Gunless to maybe bring him in. Given you've only got a couple of months still champs, it's unlikely that chemistry issues will arise if they are going to. Then again, though, is he the problem on the team? Is Chino the problem on the team? Do they need more slaying? Because at the end of the day, we've heard people talk about that Dashi and practice had not gone very well together. Crimsix has certainly talked about it in the past with um, Dashi and TJ being on the squad. Slasher, I imagine, is pretty frustrated with it, as seem to be the other guys on the squad. So is Gunless coming in, adding more firepower? Is that going to actually make the difference to take this squad to an XL? I don't personally think so. I just think the core of this roster is probably somewhat broken. And going forwards, they're going to have to split this team up and, you know, maybe start from scratch, right? Then again, maybe it works next year. And at the end of the day, winning often cures everything. So if that was to be the case, then um, everything might work out for the better. Clearly, this team uh, doesn't really suit this game. But, um, but also there's clearly deeper issues within the squad, which I don't really think a gunless change um, really resolves. I don't really think it's very possible to make any other change on the squad. Like, your other sub is Gunja, right? Like, are you going to bring in Gunja? Like, where are you if you're going to fit him into the squad? I just don't think it's going to work. So, honestly, I think OGLA might be chalked. If they do try and make some other some other change, maybe it's from an amateur player that we've seen have good success with other players. Uh, but who do you swap out, right? That's a good question. Intrigued to hear your thoughts down below then. Just before we finish, to go back to this tweet from Easy Mac, changes from land to online. Thought this is kind of interesting. Looking at, um, well, all the teams looking in terms of map win percentage. So a lot of teams have somewhat improved. New York, Florida, Toronto, Dallas, OGLA, LAG, and Seattle. A lot of these teams have made roster changes to improve, I suppose. Dallas, I suppose, is the only one that, um, you know, really hasn't. But at the same time, Dallas, you would expect them to continue improving regardless, especially given the players they have on their team. Then you've got Paris, who really, I'm not exactly sure sure they've got particularly much worse. They just kind of stagnated as a squad. Atlanta's gone down as well. Minnesota, Chicago, and the London Royal Ravens as well in terms of land to online, um, you know, win, map win percentages. But then again, London have had very hard brackets lately, especially. So intrigued to hear your thoughts on all this stuff down in the comment section below. What do you think OGLA should do going forward? Is there any saving them? Thanks for watching as always. I'll see you next time.